Hi, this is ModelRailroadBenchwork.com here. Today I'm going to show you how to install the Millhouse River Studios turntable. If you've never heard of these guys, you really should look them up. They make a wonderful product. So this is the turntable. Once you get it out of the giant box that it's shipped in, you want to inspect it for damage very well. And once you get everything unpacked, you'll notice there's a tag here. That means that it is zip tied for shipping. Now I'm going to go ahead and use some clippers here and, and clip those. I'm going to go ahead and clip them and pull them out gently. And what that does is that frees up the turntable to come loose. See if I can do this one handed. So it's very important, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to disconnect this little wire here. And it's just a push connector so it comes off. So push connector comes off real easy. And then that, after that, you're going to make sure you always pinch from the top and the bottom or grab it from the bottom. Like so. To pick it up and move it around. That'll keep the top from getting screwed up. As you notice, there's, there's no scenery details on, on top as of yet, which allows you to just go ahead and grab it and set it upside down flat so it's safe and out of the way. So after you get this done, you're going to want to place your turntable where it belongs. Now I have a one-to-one -one print here that I've laid out so I know exactly where it's going. It's that big circle. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it upside down. Okay, so now you can see I've got the turntable flipped upside down. I've got it in position and I've got the paper that was there cut out of the way and I went ahead and cut it large because it really doesn't matter at this point. Um, this particular uh, turntable is actually one of the uh, electronic control ones which has the auto indexing system on it so you'll see there's a little electronic board here and then there's a little static electricity uh, bag to protect things and I'm just going to go ahead and leave that on for now um, doesn't really matter either way um, there's a home button here and um, from what I understand is that is just telling the little microcomputer where the turntable is. So that is considered zero. Uh, we'll get into more of that later. So now that we have this um, turned upside down and I have it positioned the way I wanted, which in this case is the home track, which is right here, is lined up with the beam. You don't have to do this. It's just something I like to do. You're going to go ahead and take a permanent marker and you're going to draw, I'll just draw around it. So now that I have the permanent marker marked all the way around, I'm going to do one more thing before I go ahead and cut this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the control plate, put it face side out. And I'm going to draw a permanent marker line up here and down here. What this is going to do is this is going to give me a reference point. So when I get the hole cut out and I go to start drilling the holes for the bolts, I know this is still lined up with how I want the track position. So when it's in place, this mark is still going to line up with this. It'll be about an inch closer. Okay, so now I've got the turntable taken back off and I've got it set to the side. So it's on a nice flat surface so I don't have to worry about it warping or twisting. So next thing up is I'm going to go ahead and cut the hole. And as you might imagine, it's pretty simple. So I'm going to go ahead and drill a 3 8 inch hole. And then I'm going to use that as my starting spot for my jigsaw. Now, in my case, I am using a rigid Job Max. Um, and I did just happen to get the brand new Octane, but the regular one works just as well. Um, 
This Job Max in particular is really, really nice. And the reason why I use it is because this front end does not tip, which means my cut is always going to be straight. So go ahead and let me get this cut real quick and we'll get back to it. Okay, so now I have this partially cut. I'm cut about a quarter of the way around. So you started there, hole was inside and then it just kind of creeped up on it. I'm gonna go ahead and install a piece of scrap right here. And then once I get past it, I'm going to install another one on it right about there. Now what this is going to do is when I'm finishing the cut way over here, it's going to support this end and keep it from falling. So now that I have the hole completely cut and it's supported, I can just go ahead and lift the right on out. Of it. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and put the turntable back in the hole and line up your marks so everything lines up the way you want it to. And believe it or not, it actually did fall into the hole on the first try, so yay me, that never happens. So after that, you're gonna go ahead and grab a quarter inch drill bit, and you're gonna drill all the holes all the way around. So once you get the holes drilled, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and pull out the turntable yet again, set it off to the side. And then you're gonna take a 5 16 drill bit and re-drill it. The reason for this is pretty simple, is as accurate as that is, wood is not, your drilling methods may not be square, etc. So it's nice to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. So basically what it does is it gives you about a 30 second on each side to wiggle that bolt into place. So now that I have the turntable out, I went ahead and made myself a little template. I'm going to be using a bolt called an elevator bolt. So basically what it is, is it's a carriage bolt, but they squash down the head really small and flat. What this does is it's going to make sure that it sits flush with the surface, but it still gives it proper support. So what I did is I drilled a, in this case, I'm using the quarter 20 version. So it has a one inch head. So I went ahead and drilled a one inch hole. I put a bolt in the, the holes that I've previously drilled and then uh, stuck the board on top of it to make sure it was nice and centered and put two screws in it. So now I'm going to go ahead and pop that bolt out and using a Forstner bit. Um, and the Forstner bit basically it drills a flat hole. You can find these at any hardware store. I'm going to go ahead and use this template here. To drill down just a little bit so the edge of this bolt sits nice and flat. So now that I have all my holes drilled and recessed ready for my elevator bolts, I'm going to go ahead and install the turntable. So what I'm doing, and unfortunately I can't film this because well I can't hold the camera and do it at the same time. So I'm going to flip this upside down and stick it on my belly and push up. Now, if you have a second person, a friend, a wife, a husband, whatever, um, to help you in this particular spot, this is very, very, it's a very good idea. So, I've already got my washers and my nuts. I've got, uh, in this case, my impact driver with a 7 16 inch socket, and I have two bolts in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this on my belly, push it up, and get the two bolts in place. Now, it's very important. When you do push up on this thing, never ever push on the middle. So while this is a box I-beam, or a box beam, and it's very strong, it you could actually bend this in the middle, which would change how the turntable works and it could actually damage it so when you are pushing on it's very important to push on either side again you don't want to push on the motor area a whole lot either um, again this whole assembly is very rigid but you don't want to take a chance in twisting it or distorting it in a way that's going to damage it okay so now you can see i've got the turntable in place and it's held up by two bolts so what i did is I ended up pushing it up with my hands 
and then I replace my hands with my feet. So I'm not pushing real hard, but it's just enough to hold it up in place, which allowed me to thread on a nut on one side and then switch over to the other side. So there's no washers or anything at this point. It's just enough to hold it up in place so I can get the other bolts in. While you're on top installing the bolts, this is a good time. There we go. This is a good time to also reinstall the turntable. You're going to need the turntable installed so you can adjust it for track height. Um, so if you are using cork and you know, th these turntables actually use Atlas track on the turntable itself. But in this case, I'm using uh, Ross Custom Switches and Gargraves track for this particular layout. So every track is going to have a slightly different height. So you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that you have a couple pieces of cork on hand. A couple pieces of whatever track is going to interact with this turntable on hand as well to make sure that that height is correct. So now I have all of the bolts in place and I've got a piece of half inch plywood. It's a 12 millimeter for you uh, metric folks. I've got two washers in here, one washer on the bottom and then a nut. So this piece of plywood, in order to make my life easy, I actually cut a little slot in it. So it looks more like a, uh, a fender shim or, or, or something like that if you're familiar with that. So what this does is this makes it nice and easy to just slide it in place. It clicks in place and then just tighten it down. So you notice I'm not like going nuts with tightening these down it's just a matter of just snug them up make sure everything's tight and then in my case that happened to make it the perfect height for my connection with cork and my gargraves track here so once you get the turntable installed you're going to want to adjust it to make sure the height is level with the track you're going to use now what I found is while this is an auto indexing turntable, I did actually disconnect the auto indexer and make it manual. I'm just using a little model power controller. And what this does is this allows me to turn the turntable just a little bit here or there so I can check all the way around. I'm using a couple pieces of cork here and a piece of track just to make sure that the height is correct. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you liked what you saw and you're curious about what's going on behind me, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. It doesn't mean a whole lot to you, but it's a huge deal for me. Thanks and see you on the next video.